Okay, welcome back, my friends. Perry here once more to talk about what I believe is probably one of my favorite jobs in information technology, and that is the project manager. The project manager, now I want to be upfront, the PM is not an easy job, but it is a great job. It is a job that is challenging, vast, rewarding, and actually pays really well. PMs, especially as you kind of grow a little bit, really do clear six figures. They make a great living and also have a ton of upside in terms of potential promotion into senior management roles. It's very common for project managers who do well to get moved into like director level jobs within companies. So if you're starting to evaluate your career and trying to figure out what to do next, but you don't really wanna become a dev or a systems administrator or SE, I recommend really looking at the project manager. It's a great role, it's lucrative, and there is a lot of growth that you can achieve as a project manager. So the project manager or the technical project manager, and that's an important distinction. There are a lot of project managers. You have project managers um, on engineering projects like dams. You have project managers for um, you know, manufacturing. What we're talking about here are technical project managers. Those individuals who are really focused on managing information technology projects. Big surprise there, right? But that's really what we're talking about. Technical project managers who are focused on things like software development projects, um, implementation of new data centers, migrating content and applications to the cloud. Technical projects, that's what we're talking about today. And let me tell you, these people are the backbone of every successful project. The PM is the one who makes sure that all the resources, and by resources, I mean uh, the developers, the DBAs, um, the technology, they take all the pieces and make sure they're all put together in such a way that they can achieve their goals. And the goals are what we call requirements. And that the project is delivered on time and on budget, because that, my friend, is really how you're judged. Did you deliver the project on time, on budget, with all the functionality that was committed to? That's really what is viewed as success for a project manager. Now, when beginning a new project, you want that PM right there from the beginning. Because let me tell you, if you don't have a good PM who understands the project, the business, the technologies, it's going to get off to a bad start and the whole project will go poorly. In fact, it's not uncommon to replace PMs um, maybe a third of the way through the project because maybe there wasn't such a strong PM. And every time that happens, projects have problems. So it's important to have a good PM who really knows what they're doing early on in the project. And the technical project manager, they come from all kinds of backgrounds. They could be, for example, I know technical PMs in healthcare who come from nursing, got tired of nursing, got a little more experience in information technology, and now they're implementing things like healthcare information technology type platforms. Or maybe a folks coming out of merchandising or manufacturing in retail and transition, want to do something different and get in to information technology and become project managers. And one of the biggest drivers for that is technical project managers. The bar to get in, at least put yourself on the process, isn't insanely hard. Um, there are definitely some prereqs, but it's not like you know going back to school for four years. You can do a lot more quickly. Um, but also there's a lot of growth and technical PMs, as I mentioned, make really good money. So one of the key success criteria for every technology project, as I've said, you've got to have a skilled technical PM at the helm. Now, often if the project's really big, you might have more than one technical PM. You could have as many as 10 with one providing overarching management of all the project managers. So if you see a project and there's like six PMs on it, that's not unusual. But, you know, it's always great to have your own project. Also, most of those bigger projects, generally they'll have such a huge chunk that it will seem like it's its own project. Um, and technical project managers require a very specific skill set to be successful. So now we're going to talk a little bit about what do you need to be a PM? Because to be honest, you need a lot of different traits and they all have to play well together. So, for example, you've got to be a strong leader. You can't be a mousy person who likes to hide in the back and, and not raise their hand. You've got to be someone who can step up and say, you know what, I got this and I'll take responsibility or I'll figure this out or I'll solve this problem. You've got to have strong leadership skills if you want to be successful as a technical project manager. 
Next, you gotta have the ability to get up to speed on a variety of technical subject matter. That means you may never have had any exposure to human resource systems, but maybe you get assigned to a project. You better do your homework. You better be able to get in there, read up on the systems, figure out what they do, figure out you know who all the different players are that administer and take care of those systems. You've gotta be a quick study. So you've gotta be able to get up to speed quickly on most technology. You don't have to be the expert, you're not gonna be a developer, but you gotta be able to get in there and go, oh, I know what Microsoft Word does. I know what Microsoft SQL Server does. So at least when people start talking about it, you know what they're talking about. You kind of have like, oh yes, I know what, I know what that is. And you don't sound like an idiot because to be a leader, you kind of have to have a pretty solid skill set to make things happen. But more importantly, you want to know when you call BS on someone. If someone's talking to you, you're going to be like, wait a minute, that doesn't sound right to me. And you've got to really do your homework to make sure that you're empowered to successfully lead a project. Got to see the big picture. Though being detail-oriented is a trait, and we'll talk about that more here in a bit, you can't be so myopic that you are unable to see the big picture. At the end of the day, every technology project is a big old puzzle with lots and lots of jigsaw puzzle pieces that the PM has to help put together. And you've gotta be able to step back as a PM and see that big picture in order to successfully complete that puzzle. You gotta set stick to and then reevaluate project priorities. Now I know that seems like a conflict, but here's the thing. Before a project starts, you don't know what the outcome is going to be. You don't know what problems you're going to have. You have a set of requirements that you've gathered from the business. You're taking those requirements, you've sat down with your technology team, you've figured out a series of steps that you're going to take to be successful, right? Uh oh, what happens if all of a sudden something breaks or it doesn't work the way it does? Or maybe something is way too complicated based on your limited understanding of when you initially gather those requirements. But once you get into it, you're like, whoa, this is crazy town. Though you have to be rigid and you know stay within a budget and deliver the project on time, you also have to be very open and honest about what's working and not working. And that's almost more art than science. So it's just something you learn over time but you really have to be able to like stick to your guns when it's important, but be honest with yourself. You're like, there is no way in heck we're gonna get this time done on time and on budget and take a step back with the business and say, hey, you know, maybe we should pull this from the project and focus our energy someplace else. Okay, great listening skills. This is so critical. Even though you're a strong leader, you're there to listen as much as to speak. And you need to be able to ask good questions and be able to process those answers. So when you're trying to figure out what the business wants, often the business doesn't know what it wants. That's the hard cold fact. They have an idea about specific outcomes, but they don't maybe have an idea of the big picture. And they don't know how those different outcomes or features that they want are gonna impact one another or existing functionality within the business. You have to really listen and be able to cut process that and figure out and then in a very straightforward fashion repeat back to the business so if i understand you correctly you want a b c and d really it, that's one of those things that kind of comes with experience but it's super important okay and you've got to be able to communicate clearly and that means both written and verbal you have to be able to sit down have a conversation and as I just said, communicating clearly is as much listening as it is speaking. But you really do have to be a strong communicator. And you have to have those strong written communication skills. There's a little saying in information technology project management, if it's not written down, it didn't happen. It doesn't exist. That is absolutely true. Every meeting you go to, whether that means you sitting down at a coffee shop with a business member casually or you in a formal uh, conference room presenting, you always have to communicate what was discussed, what was the outcome, what are next steps. So as an example, thank you so much everyone for meeting today. Today we discussed A, B, and C. As a result, we agreed as a team, we're gonna do one, two, and three. And every single time you've got to do that because people get confused. Everyone is so busy and there's so much information floating around that project manager's job is to make sure that they are maintaining consensus 
and that there is no confusion. And the way you do that is by writing everything down and communicating that out via email, probably, uh, to the masses constantly so there's never any confusion. And that written communication, though, it doesn't need to be war and peace. It needs to be concise, bulleted, bop, 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 so they understand what you are trying to convey to them. Detail-oriented. So we said you can't get stuck in the minutiae. You have to have a big picture view, but you got to take care of the details too. And that's really the art of this is you have to know what to focus on and what not. But being detail-oriented and as well as being organized, these are the two things that crush a lot of project managers. Because if you think about personality traits, individuals that are strong leaders and great communicators and go-getters, type A personality, they're not often detail-oriented or organized. And so you have to know, I, actually, I'm going to confess, I am totally unorganized. And only now that I'm 45 years old and I've been doing this for 25 years, whatever, do I really have my act together and know my process and how to be organized. But you have to understand, like, where are your strengths and your weaknesses? I often have people on my team who are much more organized than I am to help keep me on the path. Because I'm telling you, nothing derails a project more than being unorganized and not paying attention to the details. Because folks get confused, and when folks get confused and things are unorganized, that's when the project goes off the rails. Okay, persuasive. Able to build consensus and drive an outcome while pro producti productively managing stakeholders. All right, so I'm going to tell you a secret. And it's not pretty, but it's 100% true you will be selling your project even after the project's done successfully. Because these projects are super expensive. Some of these projects are multi-million dollars that you'll work on. Um, and individuals who help raise that funding or these projects are associated to the business to either drive revenue or drive efficiencies, you always have to be selling them, wow, this was such a great idea, this is a great project, we're gonna be super successful, bam. So even when you get to the end of the project, and if that project, even if it was delivered on time and on budget, if the perception from the business was that it wasn't successful or it didn't deliver what it was supposed to, you failed, even if you did everything you should have. So you as the project manager, your project is your baby and you have to be the cheerleader. You are the rah, rah, rah. You are out there selling the love that is your project. And it's unfortunate, but it's true. You are the one, because at the end of the day, as the project manager, you will be judged and the buck will get passed to you and it will stop with you. So you've got to be that continual cheerleader for your project and you have to get other people excited. And that means not just the business, but the people on your team. Um, another sort of, you know, common fact that's not talked about, uh, developers, SE, systems administrators, all these guys, myself included, we're all ADD. We're all like looking for the next thing. We get bored easily. So if you're working on a long-term project, you have got to keep your team excited. You've got to keep them fired up. You have to show them they're making progress and that the business appreciates them. And this prod product is going to make the whole company much better. And sometimes that's hard. I got to be honest with you. <laughs> Sometimes that can be tough, but it is absolutely critical as a project manager to constantly spread that love about your project so you keep excitement, you keep positivity moving forward. And you can't be negative ever about your project. And this next one, the proficient at building and maintaining informal networks. I'm going to say that one more time. Proficient at building and maintaining informal networks. So important. Within large organizations, you, nothing is built in a vacuum. Every major project can touch all sorts of areas in different folks around, especially in information technology. And you're going to need a lot of help from a, not a lot of people. But here's the stone cold reality. You're not going to know it when you're building out your project plan. Things will get missed. There will be things you need. Let's say hypothetically you're building a web application and you need to get access outside the firewall. So you have to go to the firewall administrator and say, hey, Jane, I really need you to open this port on the firewall for me. Now, eventually she has to do it if a request is put in and it gets approved, but it's kind of on her timeline potentially. <laughs> Whereas if you need it right then, like if something was missed, Jane's your girl. She'll be like, yeah, I'll hook you up. I'll take care of you. 
I got you. That's the informal network. The informal network makes sure that you have a large group of individuals who like you and you like them. And not only are they hooking you up, you're hooking them up. And it's super critical to have this because otherwise your project will get delayed because a PM has to influence the success of the project. And again, nothing's done in a vacuum. And there are going to be a number of people who are going to, you're going to need their help to be successful. And if you don't have those informal networks, it's going to be so much harder to do that. You just can't rely on process and bureaucracy to get things done. You have to rely on people liking you and wanting to help you out. And that is a fact. And especially if you're just starting out in this game and you just got out of college, I can't stress this enough to you. You can't just simply live in a vacuum and do everything via email. It's about happy hours. It's about going out to lunch. It's about getting coffees. It's about asking how your kids are doing. It's about going, oh, I know you like this particular bottle of wine. Hey, I'm hooking you up with that. You've got to build that love in your community as a project manager or your job's going to be a lot harder. Positive and motivated. Okay, if you are depressed and a Debbie Downer, you will not be a good project manager. I'm just going to let you know right now. You are the sun over which the project. You are making sure that everyone is doing what they need to do and they are happy and it all stems with you. And I'll tell you straight up, if you have a project manager who is negative and a complainer and whines a lot, that project will fail straight up. I don't care how organized they are. I don't care how proficient they are, how much experience they are. If they're not positive, that project will fail. A toxic project manager will make a toxic project. So for managers out there listening to this, I'm telling you, you find that PM who is fired up, who's excited, who's empowered. And, you know, we all have our off days. Goodness knows. But that PM is going to be a professional enough to know how to handle that. So you really need happy, positive, fired up individuals to be project managers. If you have a negative person, you're going to have a negative project. And I've seen this time and time again.